<laughs> hey, kids, it's time for another exciting episode of KW Judas. <laughs> Was a great reaction here on KW Judas to Zopelote. How do you guys pronounce that? Uh, Zapelote. Zapelote. What does yeah. that mean? It's a. Uh, it's kind of a Central American term for a vulture. A vulture. vulture. I dig it. Yes. Zapelote. Zapelote. 
I should have asked you that before we started this show. But that's uh, how yeah. professional we are here on KWJS. Yeah. Yeah. No research at I all. Think, I think uh, how many species of uh, vultures are there? 13? <laughs> uh, there are. <laughs> I fucking forgot. I think there's 20, uh, 20 yeah. 22, 23? Yeah. Something like that. We're I actually knew the other at two. one point. We're the missing two. Word. So what we just heard there, um, you guys just did that this morning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's correct? Yeah. Yeah, I woke up. I got a rude awakening from Will this morning. And he <laughs> told me to come over <laughs> and record this. Actually, it, like started, it all started yesterday because we were talking about trying to do, a, do it live yesterday. And uh, I, I don't actually record often enough to actually remember what all the process is. So I always end up fucking it up, like, at the beginning not really understanding like what I'm doing anymore and then it takes me like a full day to catch up. <laughs> blame it I don't know, you can blame it on the concussions or the marijuana or whatever. But <laughs> and then this morning then Giovanni had to go to his niece's birthday party and then while he was gone I was go, Oh, I figured it out. It's stupid. Yeah, you gotta love that. <laughs> Being all professional and stuff. Yeah, so you then we just did it this morning. Things. <laughs> you decided hey, to get up and do it this morning. Yeah, trial by fire, you know. Well, so far it sounds great, but I've only listened to one song, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it could colossally go downhill from here. Well, yeah, you this recorded could be the it. The demise of Zopilota, even though it's our first recording. <laughs> so you guys had one other thing on YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, we have like a a live video we did a couple of years ago yeah. in my basement. Is this the same material, or is this all new stuff? Uh, so the stuff we're going to listen to today is that material plus three more songs. Hell yeah. So how long have you guys actually been performing under this name? Uh, we've been in and out because, uh, we're both too lazy to actually book shows and shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I found out about this show because you asked me to play one, so... Yeah. Uh, or I found out about your band <laughs> because yeah. you asked me to play a show. So, I mean, y you must not be doing too bad, right? Yeah, we just got to put in some effort. Yeah, that's usually. <laughs> I mean, we kind of started that playing helps. right at the beginning of the like a few months before the pandemic, so we yeah, were barely that. starting to like get a de define like a style, not define a style, but more like find like a sound that we were both kind of you know content with, and yeah, just COVID happened and kind of made a little things a little tricky. But it kind of made us commit to the band even more because we we kind of had to narrow down the people we were around. Yeah. So like, like we were, I was only like really with Will and like Yachi for like a f few months, you know, like, and I made I didn't really make contact with very many people during that time. So it kind of uh, helped us get stuff done. I guess that was one of the uh, benefits, kind of, of this whole pandemic thing yeah. was, you know, forces you to get together and yeah, make art I'd, out of it. I definitely uh -huh. spent a fuck ton of money on gear yeah. <laughs> in the pandemic. <laughs> you know how I was telling you that I underwent probably the most tedious undertaking I've ever done, which was the challenge of archiving all five years of KW Judas? I don't think I could have done that without the pandemic shutting everything down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of shit done oh, yeah. during that quarantine. <laughs> and you know what? I welcome quarantine. I like fucking everybody off i like having to stand further away from people i don't want to be close to people and you know what pisses me off nowadays that everyone's like okay no more like pandemic i mean sure it's still a thing in fact more people i know have been getting it than ever before it's just not as deadly apparently but no what irritates me is now we start thinking we don't need to take certain precautions that we used to before the pandemic remember hand sanitizer at the front of the store that you just put on your fucking yeah you know we were doing that before the pandemic and i appreciate a grocery store that has hand sanitizer to put on the fucking shopping cart because i don't know where the fuck that queasty shit's been and i don't know where the fuck any of those queasty walmart people have been and i don't want to put my fucking fingies where days have been and so now nobody's refilling their fucking hand sanitizer shits in the front of the store because we don't think we need to worry about it anymore it's like no we were worrying about that before the pandemic that's how you could tell that a store was a good store and that is still how you can tell a store 
is a good store. If they keep that shit full, Uh, even after the pandemic. Yeah. God bless you all. (laughs) (laughs) Let's have another song, shall we? Yeah. Of course. Um, Did that last one have a name? Uh, No, it doesn't. Does Although I have a list of I have a list of names that I could choose from, but we just haven't done. Did that you bring yet. the list? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. No have the shit. List. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna. We should go. We should song. definitely go down the list. <laughs> and we're gonna find that list while we listen to this next song. We have Zopalote here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening.
All right, we are yakking with the zap here on KW Judas, free radio Provo. You guys like that? Yeah, yeah. yakking with zap, the zap, the zap, the, the zap zapalote. <laughs> I'm trying to sound more like you know one of those those cool re- radio DJs. Like this is KW Judas in the morning rapping with the zap. I was thinking of that uh, Zap and Roger. That old Zap and Roger. That old Jesus was a friend of mine video where he tries to zap you with Jesus. Whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. I I happen to be the deceiver of this said Judas. I mean Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has zapping abilities. <laughs> Apparently so. Fuck me. Yeah, I know. I mean, we're all screwed. I need to invest point. in some superpowers. I real think quick. Uh, I think Jesus actually just discovered static electricity. Oh, well, psh. I think Family Guy po- uh, pointed that out, didn't they? I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're, if not, then they would. That kind of seems like something they would do. They're like, everybody watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's just like, holy fuck. He's oh, got Velcro or something. That's how he brought people back from the dead. He just had an amazing amount of static electricity. I have been like told the paddles you can in the do emergency that. room. I've heard you can do that yeah. if you've got enough carpet. you got to lubricate it first, though, so I'm sure he'd pee on them. <laughs> he also need the carpet lube. Ooh. That sounds like a Derpenschley product right there. Carpet lube. <laughs> <laughs> For all your static electricity needs, if you need to bring someone back from the dead, Derpenschley's new. No, no, no. We'll get to the Derpenschley commercial <laughs> later. I'm tired of zapping your friends and neighbors. Carpet lube. Uh, so it's from it. It <laughs> keeps you from zapping people. Yeah. I would make more sense. Because you have sense. lubrication. Right. It's yeah. the oil in between so you can slide more gently across the carpet. No friction. No friction, yeah. Friction-free, no static electricity. Friction-free carpets. I should have you guys on more often. You guys are full of fucking ideas. Sometimes. Maybe uh, right. there might be a place for you in Derpenschley after all, my boys. <laughs> <laughs> So this band of yours, let's talk more about that. It's just the two of you, correct? Yeah. yeah. And you, why don't you introduce yourself, friend? Uh, I'm Giovanni. And uh, you I play, play drums? drums? I play the drums. I make noises with the drums. and uh, Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing, but, you know, it's ma- I'm trying to make it sound all right. So when you My say job. trying to figure out what you're doing, are you, like, self-taught? Uh, Yeah. That's cool. That's Self-taught cool. and just trying to find like the right you know template for that kind of sound we're going for. So it's a work in progress all the time. That's how being self-taught is. Well, yeah. I mean, that's how just being a developing musician is. Whether you're self-taught or whether you're taking lessons, you're yeah. you should always be a work in project or yeah. progress. Yeah. I myself fancy myself a uh, work in progress of a drummer. Yeah, self-taught. But um, drums are uh, one of the hardest, I mean, for me, instruments to like really get really good at. They're, I think, the hardest one to just pick up. Yeah. Of just like your standard instruments. No offense, you know, to any <laughs> any other musicians that play any other instruments. I play yeah. bass, I play guitar, I play, you know, a little bit of everything. Uh, but drums, one of the biggest things that makes drums more difficult to just pick up is the fact that they're cumbersome and they're loud as fuck yeah. sure you can get uh like a v v drum kit you know electric yeah. drums and you can actually you know change the volume on that but they still take up a lot more space than say a guitar or a bass yeah. you know you got to have the space you have to have a place that you can make that noise a neighborhood that's friendly to it yeah. or you have to have the money to get a fucking you know like a storage shed where you can do it and not all storage sheds will let you do that either. Yeah. So Actually, yeah, my uh, my equipment is way harder to move around than his is. Of course, he's gonna. See. You're the guitarist, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. I just assumed that because yeah. I already know anyway. <laughs> but like the motherfucker that always got his guitar everywhere, like in the hot tub and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like everywhere you go. I mean, it's that'll, g- that'll and... give you that zap you're looking for. <laughs> Word. I'm just going to call you Zap from now on. Zap. zap. What up, Zap? Zap. <laughs> zap. Zap Olate. Zap Olate. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, his fucking, his setup, man, is, uh, it's like two trips kind of setup. Like, uh, yeah. I saw you play, but it was several years back. And yeah, <laughs> you're all about the monster noise. 
Yeah, volume. It was uh, with if I don't, vision, if I don't have I enough. Saw, yeah. If I don't have enough volume, everybody might realize that I suck at playing guitar. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. You, you gotta have fuck tons of fucking equipment. Yeah, I'm just gonna vibrate them so people hard because they just they, they don't notice. Code. No, I get you. I get you. It's a popular thing um, to do. But really. but I mean, it's uh, it's awesome. It's a it's like it an works. Exper- it's an experience of its own. Like. It's like one thing listening to like a recording of it, but then to be there is like a whole different, you know. Yeah, it's a oh, whole that's kind of how it is when you're when you're making that loud of noise and a lot of your sound is involves the noise. Yeah. Um, yeah, what you guys are hearing out there in the audience is nothing compared to seeing these guys live, and of course, I've only seen this newer project live on YouTube, but I've seen what you do. I've seen the Grand Vision once or twice, and um, what kind of a setup are you working with now as far as Um, amplitude and whatnot? Well, so I actually put a noise meter on it the other day, and I was up around 130 decibels. So for... Um, And it's... What would that compare to? Like, is there there a noise just that, like, like our listeners could maybe like relate that to that you that would be about one hundred thirty uh, decibels. It's, it's like approaching a jet engine. Damn, uh, it's it's pretty loud. Damn, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say maybe um, like a shotgun going off, but Jesus no. Christ, uh, maybe a shotgun. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. I, I forgot Which to like louder? actually I I forgot know. to like actually look at those like comparison scales. I mean, I so, live by the Hill Air Force Base, and I hear the jets, and they you can hear them from like three miles. Away, so I don't know if we're that loud, but <laughs> three miles away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, so maybe we are. If that you loud. worked for the Hill Air Force Base, what were you doing three miles away from fucking even being able to know what that sounds like? Well, I'm currently up by the Hill Air Force Base, not at the Hill Air Force Base, but ah, just down ah, the street. Right. Bold claims there, and you know those things fly. <laughs> Actually, there was an air show this weekend o- over there, and. And they were almost as loud as you guys. I I think so. Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost. A whole yeah. fucking air show, yeah. and these guys are still fucking louder. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, come see these guys live. When's your next show? <laughs> uh, don't have one right now. Well, we're, God we're, damn it. Uh, this is it. This is soon. it. <laughs> right here. This is their next show, KW Judas, yeah. going on air next week, which if you're listening to it, it's next week now. Folks, KW Judas, Zopalode. We're going to have another one here, and we'll be right back rapping with the Zap. Thank you all for listening. Free Radio Profile.
kid? Are you tired of that pus-ridden old cow titty milk? Ew, pus-ridden. Cow titties, queasty. Mm-hmm, the queastiest. And only Derpenschle brand soy milk will save you. Well, thanks, Derpen guy. I don't know where we'll be without you. 27 weeks later. Hey, kids, how's that soy milk treating ya? Well, gee, Derpen guy, what the hell? What? What? What do you mean? I drank Derpen soy milk every day for 27 weeks, and look what happened. I've got man boobs. Three of them. Well, how deep. Yeah, and that made my man boobs shrink to little prunes. Oh, it's supposed to do that. But why? Why, you ask? So they can be surgically removed with Derpenschle's new Derpen Soy Milk Man Boob Remover. That looks like a rusty old scalpel blade taped to a toothbrush handle. We're out of here. Hey, wait. It's, it's brought to you by Derpenschle. Brought to you by Derpenschle. All right. Well, that was a word from our sponsor, Derpenschle. Blessed be the Derpen. So we are at the top of the Derpen Hour with Zopalote here. What do you guys have to say to the children out there of today? Uh, I don't know if we're the best uh, ambassadors for that kind of... <laughs> ambassador. The fact that you... Your choice of words says it all. I think that you are the proper ambassador. Thanks. My My only advice to the children of the world is don't wait too late to try psychedelics. I like that. I like that. I can't. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to condone any kids out there using any drugs or anything, but um, psychedelics would are different. never do anything like that, just for the record. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, what Will said. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I actually, since we're on the topic, just recently, oh, what should we call it? I had a little Mario food, you know, how he gets big. Yeah. And so... I don't usually actually look to the psychedelics for, like, any kind of a life-changing experience. You always hear people talking about that happening, and I have had some interesting experiences, yes, and I've witnessed some interesting things on psychedelics, but this was probably the first time that I genuinely, like, my thought process actually led me to something that seemed to have stuck with me. Uh, and it's really kind of hard to describe, but... Not everybody has, I guess, what they call your inner dialogue, you know, where you kind of say whatever you're thinking inside your head. You can kind of almost hear your own voice saying it. It's like speaking out loud without actually speaking. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I don't know if you guys do that, but I tend to. Yeah. Uh, and not everybody does, but a lot of people do. And I actually didn't know that. I just kind of figured everybody did. But not everyone does, apparently. So that kind of being in mind, I guess I was able to dig a little bit deeper and like, I again, kind of hard to describe it, but analyze where that was coming from and kind of, I guess, step outside of the thought process and actually analyze the thought process itself and be like, okay, so it's kind of funny how there are these thoughts that they formulate before your inner voice starts speaking it. And usually your inner voice says it before your mouth says almost anything. Not everybody and not all the time, but generally speaking. And so I started thinking about that and I started thinking that that was kind of interesting. And uh, another interesting thought started coming to mind about how, especially lately I have been talking to myself a lot too often Thoughts will just come to the to the mind, and I'll just say it whether anybody's present or not, especially, I don't know, when in times of anger or frustration, you know. And uh, the more you let yourself do that, the more unbridled it becomes and the more out of control it becomes and the more out of control I have been becoming a lot lately. Uh, and I've been like, man, I need to get a handle on this shit. Like, it's getting bad, you know. <laughs> And uh, I don't know how I'm going to change that. I haven't always been that way. But I was like, how the fuck do you get out of that habit? Especially when you've been doing it for so fucking long. I think sometimes it comes with like, uh, I, I want to say age, maybe like, like maturity. 
I think it's just a way of like handling and being able to like kind of revise your thoughts. I guess you can say. Are you referring to like speaking them out loud to yourself? Yeah, like I think it's I think it's perfectly healthy to just kind of like try to like have a second view on like try to get a second perspective on things. It does help me sometimes. Yeah. I like that my second perspective is in my own head. I kind of started thinking about the fact that when I keep <coughs> it inside my own head and I don't verbalize it, keeping it in your head makes you think about it longer and it actually the thought continues to develop and evolve and when you speak it sometimes you might have let that thought out a little too soon and it didn't have the time to refine itself into what it might have become yeah. if that made any sense <coughs> and so maintaining the inner dialogue and I'm not trying to sound crazy but more listening to the voices in your head rather than verbalizing them it kind of helps you to work out a lot of those problems on your own without um, reacting to it the way that I have been. Yeah. And um, it's one thing when you start making those sort of mental connections and you are thinking like that when you're on psychedelics, but making that stick, it carrying it over with you, that is the tricky part. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... Um, the fact that the next day I actually asked myself in my head, I was like, okay, so you remember this, right? And I was like, oh, fuck, I do. So are you going to do it? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. That's a serious commitment. That's a yeah. life change. Well, it's it's like you're entering a different part <laughs> of your consciousness when you're, like, altered. Right. And so when you go back into it, you do kind of have to ask yourself that question. Are we going to leave that there or are we going to try and carry it over with us and yeah. keep it? And I, w I was like, by all means, let's try and keep it this time because <laughs> too many times I will have this cool connection while I'm on psychedelics. And it kind of stays there once I come back into this reality, if that yeah. makes this sense. This has like the possibility of being some like Clive Barker shit. How so? Like different dimensions and yeah. Walking through to the other side, can I bring it back? Like I, some Haruki Murakami shit. I haven't read any of those guys' stuff, but I think that's interesting uh, concepts, personally, you yeah. know. Uh, also kind of making potential connections with, like, I don't know, like dream worlds and whatnot. Yeah. And other just altered states of consciousness. Any sort of altered state of consciousness definitely uh, interests me. And, you know, like, so dreams, that counts. Um, psychedelics count even uh, mental illnesses are yeah. a form of altered state of consciousness yeah anxiety you know, it being knocked the fuck out yeah. <laughs> being yeah. you know comatose is an altered state of consciousness and god knows what the fuck is going on in your brain when you're comatose I had this I had this vision in my head of like words just bouncing around your head and the only way they can get out is if you just open your mouth and they fall out like my head specifically, <laughs> yeah, like they just roll right off your tongue. <laughs> Are you on psychedelics right now? Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to try doing an episode <laughs> <laughs> on psychedelics with Mario food. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can invite our friend Sydney over as our guest. <laughs> That sounds like eight hours of gibberish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think that we would do this show for the whole trip, man. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if our <laughs> audience can handle man, that. You, you never know. You never know. I think the I audience don't know if would Sydney have to do can handle that. I think they you could literally be like, "Oh shit, has it really been eight hours?" Yeah. Ah, really? Yeah. If you want to enjoy this, then you got to also be on it. Yeah, that would kind of be our thing. We'll yeah. just tell everybody, hey. On this night, when this episode broadcasts, <laughs> make sure that you're hanging out with Mario or Sydney <laughs> while you listen to this with us. Yes. It'll be, it'll be quite and you'll the fucking get it. <laughs> Tell Toad I said what's quite up. Quite the experience. There, <laughs> there may or may not be any music on this production. There may or may not be any talking. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Could just be a bunch of weird fucking noises for a couple hours. I mean, how many times can I fart into the microphone and fi still find it funny? <laughs> <laughs> on acid? <laughs> Probably Depends a lot. Depends on what you're doing with the fart. Yeah. yeah. 
Plus, you're like, if you're on like a 12 hour trip, you have 12 hours to drop farts and think they're funny. Seems like a little bit of a waste of a trip to me. I had a. <laughs> I, had a I was taking the piss. It's so unpleasant so quickly. Day. Especially for the other people you're tripping with. Yeah. <laughs> if you were alone, then have at it, buddy. Like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Word. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, yeah. Um, I was taking the piss one time on acid, and I was tripping that on my piss. It was like, <laughs> it was like, it was like foaming up and like turning into these. Crazy I'm glad patterns. that I let you finish that thought. Yeah. Okay, keep going. No, that's probably like the. Visually, there is a there is some visuals, but that one was trippy because. I was trying to believe that it was real. I don't know. That your maybe. pee was real or no, that the spiral graph coming out of your yeah, urethra was yeah, real? <laughs> exactly. Like, I was like, whoa. Like, that was the trippiest piss I've ever taken in my uh, life. Oh, dude. I, <laughs> I, have, I have actually sat back down after I peed and drawn what I saw. Yeah. I still need to finish that picture, too. Yeah. <laughs> because that, I think, is one of the funnest things to do while you're tripping yeah. is sit, just sit down and make yourself draw. Titled, Whatever the fuck comes to you. Titled yeah. Urination Station. And yeah. that actually came to me. I was seeing some sort of weird being. You don't usually see, like, you know how, like, before you done mushrooms or whatever, they're like, oh, you see mushroom elves or you see, like, smurfs or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but I never just, like, hallucinated a being, like, yeah. a actual thing there or a person that I thought was there. Um, but... I definitely, the, the spiral graph, said spiral graph that protrudes out of said urethra did sort of start to formulate into the shape of what looked like some weird alien-like yeah. multiple-eyed insectoid thing that yeah. uh, was in, you know, sort of outlined in uh, neon lines. It wasn't like a solid form or anything, but if it did kind of start creeping out of the toilet. If it's multiple eyes, does it have several holes to piss from? Um, it comes out of the piss, and so that would be like, where would its piss come from? How would it pee? Could it could it be that that's actually the tears it's for your very educational. penis? Now we're getting into some <laughs> deep shit. There's some Clive Barker shit. How does a multiple-eyed penis being pee through its eyes? I don't know. I never read Clive like Barker. Tears. How the it's fuck like he would tears. he wrap that one up? Probably except step through a door. Except it's salt water. It might hurt. <laughs> hurt me or hurt the being? The being. <laughs> I don't know. It it doesn't really hurt me when I cry out my penis. So I don't <laughs> see why it would hurt him. It's salty, but sure. I don't have taste buds in my dick hole. Uh, at yeah. least it's not crusty. That sounds painful. <laughs> Depends on if you wipe it off or not. Yeah. You don't so anyway, there. Um, yeah. I think it's about time for another song, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's hear it. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have to name these when we come back. This is Zal Pelote on KW Judas Free Radio.
That was Zopalodi here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. So, what was the name of that last tune? Uh, that was called uh, T minus whenever it feels right. Word. Yeah, I dig it. I actually just heard a couple of songs there. Um, what was the one before that? We could uh, we could call it. We all can propose some right now. Why not? We could call it All Hail Supply Side Jesus. <laughs> yeah, just pick one out of that list. <laughs> yeah. Um Bubble Boy will not be breached. Okay. So <laughs> And then before that we had <laughs> Bubble Boy will not be breached. Yeah. And the first song we heard also <laughs> no title. <laughs> Let's just call it The Entire System Can Go Eat a Landfill Size Pile of Dicks. All right, let's let's stick with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to just put you on the spot like that. <laughs> it's kind of funny how many fucking guests of mine don't have names for their songs. Really? Yeah, like one time the guy just let me start naming his shit. Nice. <laughs> and you don't want to do that. But I guess um, with the titles that you came up with, maybe you would. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, a, like an afterthought, just t- naming the songs. Well, I mean, you know, nowadays in this world of Zoomers and um, free bus tokens, what else are you supposed to do? I could I could call it uh, Danzig's Audi Butthole. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next song is called Danzig, Dan- <laughs> Danzig's Audi Butthole. <laughs> On KW Judas, free radio promo. Uh, I can't. Uh, it's a good thing you you kept.
Danzig's Audi Butthole here on KW Judas <laughs> Free Radio Provo. That is my favorite song title ever. And he didn't even make that up himself, folks. I'm a plagiarizer. <laughs> Where the fuck would you have ever, like, who? Yeah, I, I don't even know what context that would have been taken from. I really wish I could remember. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think you get that from, like, Adult but those, Swim or anything. But those, like, those three words together are just the greatest collection of words, I think, in the history I, of mankind. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. think of any, like, other words for every one of those things you could substitute that would be better in that fucking process. And whoever put them together for the first time is a certified genius. <laughs> Even if it was just a random fucking Facebook post, you are a genius. Mm, 100%. <laughs> the creator of Danzig's Audi butthole. <laughs> I mean, it <laughs> might be 150%. That might be the most <laughs> clever person to ever walk the face of the earth. I think we need to make a Netflix movie out of it. Yeah. Danzig's yeah. Audi butthole. Yeah. See if we can get Derp and Slee to fund it. They'll fucking <laughs> put Audi. forth the peanut shells. Grease some palms. Uh. Well, we got one song left, folks. We're going to end it with a banger. What do you call this one? <laughs> Acid Shivers Blues. Okay, we'll go with it. Actually, that is the re- the actual title. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Okay, we actually have a song with a real title here on <laughs> KW Judas by whoever the fuck these guys are. Uh, where do people find your music on the internet? Uh, we do have the YouTube video up. If you look on YouTube, as Zopilote, S-L-C, that's Z-O-P-I-L-O-T-E, or Zopilote underscore S-L-C on Instagram. Is there another Zapalote somewhere? There's a few floating around, but... Oh, fuck. Nobody as badass as we are. Okay, so you can also type Zapalote <laughs> underscore badass as we are. I mean, I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least you think so. Are you okay? Because I'm okay. KW Judas, <laughs> Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good evening, folks.
now we thank you for tuning us on another exciting episode of KW Judith Free Radio Provo. We now return you to our regular Free Radio programming. <laughs>